Jamaica has a, has that a variety of climates, even within our tiny island. We're here in the northeast of the island, in the kind of rainforest end of the island and there's a lot of vegetation <laughs> and a lot of it is um contains plants that are renowned for their healing properties you have herbs that can stem the flow of blood you have herbs that are antibacterial that can kill germs and you have herbs that help the healing process this one we call pepper elder and it's part of a the Piperace family and there's a large, many different kinds, but this is very good for nausea, vomiting, stomach problems, colds and flu, but very good for stomach problems. People tend to think because it's a herb that it, it's effect neutral. The same power it has to heal, it can harm. So you need to understand when it's wise to use a herb, how much of it to use, how long to use it for, and in what circumstances. It's just been amazing finding, you know, like a plant like what we call leaf of life. It occurs in so many cultures and have all these amazing uses. And we have it here practically wild. You can see the edges. This is where the plant grows from, in these indents here. It's quite a succulent plant. When the plant gets very mature, it bears these flowers. Juice the leaves and use that juice for cold. You can use the juice to apply it to, to stings and bites and whatever. But the plant, when you warm the leaves, it's a great thing for joint pains and, you know, I've had hurt my knee and just warm the leaves and that's all I've strapped on. It's been amazing. Headaches, just tie on the leaves. It's just an amazing plant. It's got so many properties. Jamaica should have one of the most vibrant, productive plant industries. We should be making oils, we should be making products out of these this amazing variety of plants that we have here. We have plants that I've seen economies developed elsewhere in the world and I know maybe it's not going to make billions but it could provide people with cottage industries and bigger um, developments. Essential oils are really big business and we're chopping down a lot of raw material for essential oils. We have the essential oil for um, one that's called vetiver. It comes from couscous root. It's one of the main um, ingredients in a lot of these high-end colognes and perfumes. We have another one that's called internationally ilang ilang. We call them perfume flowers. The tree grows widely right around here. And the flowers just get trampled down and whatever. Ilang Ilang is one of the key ingredients in high-end uh, perfumes like Chanel No. 5 and other ones. We have sour orange that could be making a roly and petit grain. We have the raw material for a wide range of essential oils, healing ones. We could be making soaps, skin creams, a whole other products with added value out of the natural plants. I'm looking forward, hopefully in the very near future, to, 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 to putting the book out there because I've had such a great response and I've met so many people virtually through the website and, you know, it's been very encouraging, very encouraging and motivating. And I think this is one of the first books that's really looked at both traditional and modern research, and showing how modern research has confirmed many traditional uses, but has also pointed the way to even wider uses, because we never used to use soursop for cancer, or guinea hen weed. But now modern research is showing that those plants, that's what those plants have the potential to do, so that's what we have to, to go with. And I think um, I put a lot of effort into trying to document what's available. I would like people who read the book to be able to run with some of the ideas in it, use information as a launch pad to go and do their own research, follow the plant that particularly appeals to them and see if they can do something with it. 
because I want the people here to know and appreciate what they have and get more knowledge, regain some of the knowledge they've lost about what's around them and start to think of it and see the potential in what's around them because too many of them are looking outwards and not looking at what's right under their feet, literally, and to really understand the value of what's around them. They have a little Garden of Eden and they don't give it enough love. And I think maybe if they rediscover what's really, how blessed they are and how fruitful the environment in which they take more care of it and stop nuking it with these herbicides and just chopping down stuff and destroying trees without really understanding the value of what they have and thinking of the future generations. If they want to leave the blessings with the future generations, they have to take care of what's around them here and now. Thank you.